Hey guys, today we got a lot to do. We're gonna do some freezer prep meals from our Azure Standard Hall. I don't know if you guys saw our last video, but I'll link it somewhere, where we bought a lot of things through Azure, and we went and got the food, and then we got a whole bunch of food now in bulk, and also we got a lot of eggs. You can see here from our chickens that we need to preserve. We have a ton of potatoes. I don't know if you saw our potato video as well. We harvested over 200 pounds of potatoes and we have to preserve those as well. So sometimes instead of like canning or preserving that way, we like to preserve things just by making freezer meals and then it's ready to go. And then all we do with our freezer meals is just pop them in the oven and we're pretty much good to go. Our kitchen is always a mess <laughs> because we make things from scratch. And so now if you see our kitchen looking clean, I spent a lot of time and my wife did too cleaning it up. So don't think that this is what a kitchen looks like all the time. It's never perfect. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot of food to prep, so let's go ahead and get started. So on the menu today, we have some chicken fried rice that we're gonna make, and I'm gonna use some of that brown rice, organic brown rice that we got from Azure. And I'm gonna make quite a lot of brown rice. Yeah, I might make the whole thing a rice, which sounds crazy, but that way we have a ton to preserve in the freezer just plain rice, and then that way I can make chicken fried rice with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this washed. I grew up in Puerto Rico, and all I have memories of when washing rice is my grandmother over the sink, just washing rice five or six times. And you wanna wash rice just to get rid of that excess starch, but the water's a little cloudy. You wanna wash rice until the water is clear. Okay, rice is all washed, water's clear. I don't really measure when I make it in the Instapot because the Instapot holds more water than when you make it in a regular pot over the stove. I just literally put my finger in and enough water for the first line. That's what my grandmother taught me for rice and that's really it. And then I'm just gonna put it on the Instapot and I'll show you that. Okay, here you can see we're in my pantry. We have a small pantry, but my wife and I wanted to put outlets in our pantry so that we have all of our appliances here. That way they're not out in the open and cluttering up the counters. So I put the rice on manual. And I'm gonna time it, since it's quite a bit of rice, I'm gonna time it for about 20 minutes. And then make sure you have your pressure valve to close. Let that sit and then forget about that. Okay, so the next thing we gotta prep is our sauce. We're gonna make like a baked lasagna. Was that the lasagna? It's like a baked lasagna dish. However, we just use regular noodles. So we use brown rice noodles in ours. Plus, we have a lot of tomatoes that we froze whole, and this is what we're gonna use to make our sauce with. So we preserve our tomatoes by freezing them, essentially, and then we just make a sauce. Okay, so we're gonna put in our frozen tomatoes. And when I make my tomato sauce, there's no rhyme and reason as to what tomatoes I use. We have some of these are the Napa Chardonnay, cherry tomatoes that we grew this year in our garden and we just put those in there and then these are just a mixture of some from my mother-in-law that she gave us they're plants that she got from our nursery but not exactly sure which varieties some heirloom some regular so this will take a while to reduce because there's so much excess moisture because they're frozen but it'll make a great sauce. And I'm gonna go ahead and salt these right now just to get rid of some excess moisture. I'm also gonna add some olive oil to this just to get it going so that the tomatoes don't burn in the bottom. And this is organic olive oil that we got from Costco. So I got these cooking and I got my list here. We got chicken fried rice we're making, breakfast burritos. I'm gonna make some extra brown rice like you saw just to freeze extra. I'm gonna make some extra chicken just to have frozen, some quinoa. I'm gonna make some chicken broth, and I'll actually show you guys how I make that in the Instant Pot, because it doesn't take 10 hours like it does in the Crock Pot. And then I'm making the, bake, the baked pasta dish, which is this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my potatoes washed and start peeling them, but in the meantime, we got some in-house entertainment. Luca wants to share something with you guys. I got a joke. How do cats make cake? from scratch. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Here's another one. What <laughs> kind of haircuts do bees get? Buzz cut. <laughs> uh, it's real with the dad jokes with this one. That we got him a little book that um, 
was jokes for seven-year-olds. I don't really feel like they're for seven-year-olds. It should have been like a dad joke book for kids, but I love them. I think they're hilarious. So I'm gonna go ahead and, thanks Luca, those are really funny. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get peeling my potatoes. You can see them here. I'm gonna show you. There we go. Here are our potatoes. I'm just gonna peel them just like you'd peel any other potato. I do have to get my oven preheated. I'm gonna preheat it probably to 400. Potatoes can take quite a bit of high heat in the oven and they'll crisp up a lot better that way. <laughs> Okay guys, so we got the potatoes all on the tray here and I'm gonna go ahead and just put some, you can do avocado or olive oil. Honestly, I do prefer avocado because the smoking point isn't so low so it doesn't burn. But I really like the taste of the uh, olive oil in this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use uh, uh, olive oil this time. And I'm just gonna mix it in with my hands. Get it pretty nice and oily because potatoes are pretty starchy so they can take quite a bit of oil. And then, I'm not gonna salt these until the end because I find that when you put salt at the beginning, I feel like they steam for longer and it takes them longer to cook. So I want them nice and brown and crispy. Even though they're pretty piled up, they still should crisp up pretty well. Again, I have my oven ready to go at 400. I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and then let's pop this in. I got these in the oven. I just realized the potatoes kind of look like they have ham in them. The purple potatoes kind of look like pinkish, like ham. So the next thing we got to do for our chicken fried rice is get all of our eggs cracked in a bowl. And I'm gonna have eggs for the chicken fried rice and then also for the breakfast burritos. So I'm gonna make quite a few eggs, probably maybe 18, maybe 24 eggs. I'm gonna scramble them all. And specifically for our breakfast burritos, I like to have the breakfast burritos, the scrambled eggs, I like to have them cooled down as well as the potatoes because I found that the cheese doesn't really melt nicely when we reheat them because it melted once. I find that cheese doesn't really melt twice that well and it doesn't have the nice stretch and pull. I do like to add a splash of water to my eggs, just about that much because the water when the eggs are cooking will evaporate and I feel like it makes for really fluffy light scrambled eggs that are really good. Okay guys, if you see the corner of this, that's just my cabinet, but that's the best angle I could get with a camera. So <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put quite a bit of, this is the avocado oil that we got um, from Azure. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and add the eggs, let them cook for a little bit. I need to add some salt and pepper. My family doesn't like a ton of pepper, so while it looks like a lot here, it is a lot of eggs. Um, but I will add a good amount of sea salt here and then I'll taste it at the end and if it needs more, I'll add more. All right. And in my opinion, the key to when you're making freezer meal, uh, freezer meals but eggs for freezer meals, is to cook your eggs low and slow and to cook them like right when they're ready but not to overcook them because when you reheat them, you don't want them to be so rubbery and bouncy. And also when I'm cooking them here, I heated the pan up enough just to get it hot, to get the eggs cooking. But I'm going to cook this low and slow because I don't really want to scramble the eggs so that they're rubbery. There's the protein in eggs, when you cook it at high heat, it really can tense up, just like really any protein. Um, and you want to just allow for fluffy, light eggs. So I'm just going to go ahead and cook this until I have a scramble that's just almost done. I actually went ahead and added like eight more eggs because I have a little more room in my cast iron. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna add a pinch more salt to the eggs. Just because I added some extra eggs, I wanted just a little more saltiness, but this is about perfect. You see they're light and bouncy. They have a slight tinge of moisture to them left, which is fine because eggs, when they're off the heat, will continue to cook a little bit. Okay, so here I got my eggs. I'm gonna put them in a bowl just so that they don't keep cooking. They were getting a little darker than I'd like because I needed to rinse out my bowl. But I'm not gonna get these brown bits here, but this will come off pretty easy. So 
So now I have beautiful and fluffy scrambled eggs. They're not too cooked. They're not super rubbery or bouncy. And I'm just going to leave these here. I'm going to kind of let them cool down and then I can use some of these for my chicken fried rice and the rest I can use in my breakfast burritos. So I'm going to let these just cool down. Now the same pan that I used on my eggs, I'm going to go ahead and clean it out. It shouldn't be too hard because look at this. This is just peeling right off. So I can just peel this and then I can use this cast iron to cook my chicken for the chicken fried rice and then to have extra chicken on hand. Okay guys, so here you can see I have two whole chickens. These are the ones that we raised and we raised some, they are Cornish cross um, hens that we raised and we had a good time with them. I usually will raise some once a year. In the past, my friends have done it for us and then I would just come and help butcher and just the quality of meat is just absolutely incredible. So this little part right here, that's actually the chicken tender right there. So if you're wondering where chicken tenders come from, they usually live inside the breast right there. And this here is the chicken breast. All right, so we got our first chicken breast right here. You can see that, that's the full chicken breast. I'm going to probably take the skin off in this scenario because I'm gonna just cut up all the breasts and I'm just gonna use just the breast without the skin. But there's a beautiful chicken breast. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this chicken cut up into parts. There's barely any meat on it, but if there is meat on it, that's okay because I could pull that apart after I make the broth. So literally this is the chicken carcass and then out of this I can make my broth. So don't get rid of this. So if you buy a chicken whole from the store, in my opinion, that's the most cost effective way to do it or raise your own. But besides, if you can't, then you can just buy the whole and then start cutting it into parts. It's really not that hard. Okay, so here you can see the chicken carcass. I'm just gonna go ahead and place this in here. I'm trying not to get my bag dirty on the outside because it's going in the freezer. I grew up in a big family in Puerto Rico and probably once, maybe twice a year, we'd have family over like, and when I mean family, I mean like 100 plus people. And my mom had a pot that was as big as all the four burners and she would make rice and beans and a whole bunch of different things. And it was always like bulk food. And that's kind of how I grew up liking just making big dishes, you know? So if I'm gonna cook, I would rather make just a giant amount than just a little bit. And my mom still to this day, cause I'm one out of five. She always will say, she's like, I don't know how to cook for two people, for her and my dad. She's like, I just make bulk meals and I freeze it cause I don't know how else to cook. So I'm gonna go ahead, let's get this chicken ready and it's all cut up. And just to let you guys know, I went ahead and bagged the chicken thighs and the wings. I'm only cooking the breasts today, but I went ahead and bagged these. I'm gonna label them and freeze them. Well, normally I don't overcrab the pan just so they all get color and all that, but I'm just looking for a quick cook on these. Make sure they're all fully cooked through. I'm going to season these just with salt and pepper and keep them really plain. Then I get my pepper. Okay, so I did forget one thing for our sauce and that is garlic. What I should have done is I should have put oil down first, cooked the garlic, and then I could have added in the raw tomatoes and cooked it, but I forgot. That's fine. So I have my little pan back here and I have my garlic cloves and I like to use a garlic press. I'm just gonna go ahead and cook them on kind of a low heat. I don't wanna burn the garlic. And then I'll just put that right back in my sauce. So no worries if you forget. Okay, so I have the garlic here. It's beautiful and golden brown. Make sure it doesn't burn. And then all of this oil, I will add to my sauce. And I just use avocado oil. And make sure I get all of that garlic in there. And I'm just gonna stir that. Okay guys, so the sauce has the garlic in. We can get going on spicing that up in just a second to get it fully ready. 
chicken is just cooking away. And you can see here, because I overcrowded the pan, there's a lot of excess juices in there. Not excess, but just good old juice, which I don't mind. I actually like to overcrowd it because then I can cook this chicken just right when it's cooked and then I can keep some of that juice in there because when I go to reheat chicken, then it has some of that built-in juice in there and then I can get that nice brown color, deep color. So once most of this is cooked, I'll keep it out and then I'll leave some in and I'll flavor it for the chicken fried rice. Our rice is nice and beautifully done. I have to put this in a giant bowl. Also, I just checked our potatoes and they're looking nice and crisp. They are a little softer because the type of potato is a creamier potato. So I decided to increase the heat to 450 just to get them really crispy. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of the chicken out. And again, I didn't develop a ton of color. I didn't get it all golden brown because I will do that afterwards when I use this in recipes. Okay guys, now I have my chicken here for the chicken fried rice. I have the rest that I'm going to freeze up. I may use more for the chicken fried rice, but I like to spread it out, meaning I like to cut it up smaller and not have a ton of chicken in it. Not because, you know, we don't like chicken, but because we're just trying to conserve our chicken because we only have so much until we can raise some more in spring. And I really don't want to buy chicken. If I do need more, I have some more here I can add to it. Now you can see it's getting some color. It is getting a little drier looking. So we're gonna go ahead and add everything we need to flavor this for chicken fried rice. So I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid aminos. So we like to get the Bragg's brand. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add just a splash of water. And the reason for that is because I want to deglaze the pan. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of ginger root powder. And I'm going to add some to here. Actually, I said a little bit, but I'll add quite a bit. And it'll look like a lot because I'm adding it here for the chicken fried rice. I really like to cook my spices rather than just keeping them raw, if that makes sense. So I'm adding quite a bit. And that should be enough for all of the chicken fried rice we need to make. So again, if you taste the chicken, it will be overpowering because it is enough ginger for the whole batch. The other thing I like to add to my chicken fried rice is mustard powder, so yellow mustard powder. And again, I'm going to toast the spices up in here with the chicken. I should have a little more, hopefully. And this is the same mustard powder. I'm running out of that, so I need to buy some more. And again, if your pan is kind of gummy like this, or you feel like it's starting to stick, all you need to do is just add another splash of water, and that'll deglaze. Okay, guys, so I got my chicken with all the spices. Let's go ahead and assemble the chicken fried rice. Okay, guys, so here I have my giant pot of rice and I have a bigger bowl that looks as big as the size of my head. Actually, it's bigger than my head. Kind of reminds me of the beauty salons that, you know, the thing that goes over the head to dry, the hair dryer things? That's how big this bowl is. So I'm going to decide how much chicken fried rice I'm going to make and then going to decide how much brown rice I'm just going to freeze just plain. I'm not exactly sure how much, but we'll see. I know a lot of you guys love recipes and it's really hard because everything that I make, I never really use a recipe. So when people ask me for a recipe, I'm like, I don't know, I just throw stuff in. I hope this is helpful and it gives you an idea. So hopefully you watching me kind of do it willy nilly. Uh, maybe in the future I might do more videos on just like actual recipes that I start to write down. But for now, I just thought I'd just bring you guys along because I wanted to prepare a lot of food and use up our Azure Hall, and we also had produce that needed to be used. So here's our chicken that we flavored. We may need more, and that's okay. I can just throw it in. I don't need to season it or anything. So I went ahead and I put in the chicken, stirred that in a little bit. I put in some eggs, and then now I'm gonna toss probably a whole bag of frozen peas. These are organic. I don't even need to cook these because peas cook really quickly and easily. 
And when I go to reheat this, that's the time that I'll actually cook the peas. And this is looking great. You can see that, you know, we got chunks of eggs all throughout. We got chunks of peas all throughout. And I will taste this just to make sure the spices are right, the saltiness is good, and the slight sweetness from that coconut sugar is good. But we got a big bowl of chicken fried rice. Okay guys, so I tasted this, it's almost perfect. I think it just needs a little more of the liquid aminos because the sweetness from the coconut sugar is perfect. The peas are great, the chicken all throughout is perfect ratio, the eggs, you can taste them. I could tell too by the color, it's just not dark enough for me. And then the ginger is perfect and the mustard. One thing I did forget to add, I just add a tiny amount, it's red chili flakes. I do like to, it's not spicy, it just adds a little bit of flavor, but if you like spicy, you can add more of it for sure. And this is our red pepper flakes. We actually grew these from our, in our garden and then we dried them and we pulverized them in the coffee grinder or the spice grinder. So I'm gonna add just a small amount, uh, like that, and it'll give it just a little bit of good flavor, not really a ton of spice. Kind of like how you season with pepper, you know? It's not spicy, but it just gives it a good flavor. And now I could tell the color is that kind of darker brown black. And then when I go to reheat this, I freeze these in Ziploc bags, and I'll show you that. I'm just gonna let it cool a bit. When I go to reheat this, I just put a little more oil, and I cook it in a pan, just like you would, you know, chicken fried rice, kind of like, like, like a leftover meal. But this is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and taste this massive bowl of chicken fried rice. It's huge. Okay, and see, I did just add the liquid aminos to make sure the color looks good. Mm, mm, mm. I think now, I'm getting picky here, but I think now that I added a little bit of the aminos, I just think it needs just a tiny amount of the coconut sugar, but it's so good. Here, I'll show you here. I just need to add one, two, maybe three more. Again, this is a humongous bowl, so when I say a tiny amount, it's in reference to this giant bowl. Okay guys, so the rice is ready. I'm going to put this in the Instapot. This is quinoa. I put four cups of quinoa, and I put enough water to reach about an inch over. So I didn't really measure. And again, just salt, and then it's good. I'm gonna put this in the Instapot for seven minutes. Okay guys, so I'm gonna put this on manual for seven minutes. I got the pressure here closed off, and then we got a ton of quinoa that I can freeze just plain, and then we can make that at any time. Okay, so my other camera, the memory card got full. So while that unloads, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the progress. I have right here, you can see the potatoes are beautifully crisp right here. And they're salted. They just need to cool down just a little more. Here's the pan where I made the chicken. I just need to wash that. This is the sauce. I just turned it off for now because I have other things going. And I'll get back to this in just a second. I do need to flavor this and then I'll show you that. And then here I have the rest of the brown rice that's cooled down. So I wanna go ahead and get this packaged, and I wanna go ahead and get the rest of this brown rice packaged, and I'll show you that. And then these eggs are completely cooled, which is great. We can go ahead and start getting on to making our breakfast burritos. Okay guys, so I went ahead and cleaned my surface earlier because I did cut raw chicken on there. So I cleaned all that up, we used some natural cleaners, and then now I'm going to go ahead and package up this chicken fried rice. We use the Ziploc. Uh, freezer bags. Again, this isn't for like a year or two uh, of storage. This probably will last us less than three months. So we're really not trying to store for a long time. I could probably store in like glass containers and things to make sure that, you know, we're not using a ton of plastic. But the reason I like to store in Ziplocs is because we don't have a ton of freezer space, honestly. We have our fridge freezer here in the house, and then we have a very small chest freezer out in our shop building. And that freezer really has most of our chickens that we butchered, so it's pretty full. So, the nice thing about this is I can package it like this, 
And then I have pretty much like a filing cabinet. I can lay it flat, I can freeze them like this. And then I could take one, maybe two out if we're really hungry. And then I'll go ahead and label these chicken fried rice and then I'll put the date. And then we can put these in the freezer. Okay guys, so you can see here, I got six full bags, freezer bags here. Each one is about a meal for all three of us. Now let's go ahead and package up just our plain brown rice. Okay guys, so we have one, two, three, we have six bags of the chicken fried rice. We have four bags of the brown rice and I went ahead and labeled BR for brown rice. Put in the date, 11-12. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and package up the chicken that we made. Okay, so I went ahead and labeled this one as well, but this time I labeled it chicken, 11-12, but I also put what I seasoned it with so that we know whenever we go in the future to make something. Did I salt this? Did I pepper it? That way I don't add extra seasoning or make it too salty. So I just put salt and pepper, and then now we got a whole bunch of meals here. Let's go ahead and work on our pasta dip. I'm going to add some organic basil. You can do dried or you can do fresh. Right now, we only have dried on hand. This is organic. If we had some from our garden, we would definitely put more fresh basil in here, but we don't. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of basil, probably, sounds crazy, but maybe a tablespoon. And if you hear that beeping, our quinoa is done, which is great. So I'll let that just hang out there, cool off on its own. So a good amount of Dried oregano, probably about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. We haven't salted this yet, so I need to do that as well. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of sage, which sounds funny, but if you add like Italian seasoning, for example, Italian seasoning has all these herbs like rosemary and thyme and sage and marjoram and you name it. So in terms of herbs, that is pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt to this because I haven't salted it. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and add the salt. And tomatoes are pretty acidic. These should not be that acidic because they're from our garden. But actually the salt really helps with balancing out the acidity. If I taste this and it's still a little too acid, I might add just like a half a teaspoon of honey. And then I almost forget, I just need to add a little bit of butter. And it sounds weird to add butter to a pasta sauce, but in Northern Italy or different areas in Italy, they actually don't use olive oil, they use butter. And I love butter in a tomato sauce. It really richens it, makes it thick, and it helps balance out that acidity without adding any excess sugar. And we're big fans of grass fed butter. This is the one that we got from Azure, and we think it's great. I'm gonna taste this real quick. Ooh. No. I don't think that needs any honey at all. It's sweet. Mm. I do think it needs butter. It needs that kind of fatty coating. Oh, but that's good. So I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of butter. Okay guys, so we unloaded the potatoes. We're gonna go ahead and get ready to assemble burritos soon. But this sauce, look at this luscious sauce. It just has to melt the butter just a little bit. I did realize I need to boil the pasta, but I don't actually have another big pot to boil that much pasta. What I'm gonna do is take this sauce out. I'm gonna put it in this container here, and then I can go ahead and just rinse this off and put the pasta in this. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick, but I just wanted to show you this beautiful texture of the sauce. It is amazing and it tastes so good. Okay, let's fill this sucker up with some water to boil our pasta. Now I did not like super clean this because I don't really care. It was just the tomato sauce in here. I literally just rinsed it out just so I can boil my noodles. Okay guys, so I have my pan already clean. That other hunk of butter that I had, I'm going to put on this side. And the reason I'm using butter this time is because I'm actually making some ground meat, but this is hamburger meat from venison, so it's deer. Polly's brother was in town and he actually was hunting and he got a deer and my in-laws and him all ground this up. So we have been eating this awesome meat. It tastes so good. I actually almost prefer it over beef, but it's, it's a little leaner. So I'm going to add quite a bit of butter to get that going. And this is for a pasta dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and just brown this, add a little salt, and that's all I'm doing. Again, this is the pasta that we got from Azure. This is the Jovial Brown Rice gluten-free pasta. We absolutely love it because it tastes really real. Our meat is officially ready. Uh, 
So look at this. That's gonna be so good. And that's pretty much all the meat that I'll put in there. If you guys are looking for budget-friendly ways to spread your meat in terms of being able to have, you know, buying meat but also being able to spread it out, this is a good way to do it. This is about a pound or so of meat. And then I put about half of it in here. This other half, I'm actually going to go ahead and just let this cool. And then I'm going to freeze this as is. Just salt, plain, and then later on I can make tacos with this. I could do literally anything with this. But they freeze beautifully and when you cook it in a pan right out of the freezer, it tastes like it was never frozen. So we'll have some chicken and we'll also have some deer hamburger on hand. And then we'll have this on hand. So if we get bored of our freezer meals, we can always just have individual ingredients to make quick meals. And our quinoa is done. I took it out of the Instapot. Here's the Instapot. I spread it in half just so I can fluff it up a little bit, but it is perfectly, perfectly cooked, light and fluffy. I'm just gonna wait for this to cool. So I'm gonna keep fluffing it up. And then our potatoes, our eggs have been cooling for quite some time, which is fine. I don't really uh, mind if they're sitting there for a little bit until I'm ready for them. That's why we started them earlier. So I make sure that that cheese stays nice and frozen for our breakfast burritos. So now we can go ahead and start assembling the burritos. Okay guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my cheese grated. If you saw our Azure video, we did get the big block of cheese. However, they only gave us one and one was for my mother-in-law. So we decided to just give her half of our block of cheese. And since the time that we started to do meal prep, we actually ate the whole thing because we really liked it. And that's okay, so we just ate it. We just got a few more at the store. But next time we know we really like the cheese, we'll probably buy a little more. And then I can do some more freezer meals with it. But I have this organic cheese right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and shred this cheese. And then I also got this cheese that we have from the Azure uh, Hall. And this is just Parmesan cheese. So I do like to make a, a, put a mixture of cheeses in my breakfast burritos. And I have my tortillas over here ready to go. I also have, I didn't show you guys, I like to buy these bacon bits because they're in cured, really good quality. They don't have sugar. We don't eat a ton of pork here, but really we do like to buy these just for convenience. And this is what I like to put in my breakfast burritos instead of needing to make bacon. So I have all my ingredients here ready to go. I just need to shred this. And you can put this in the food processor to make it go quicker. I just sometimes don't like using big equipments if I don't need to because it just, it's another mess to clean. So again, here I have my plastic wrap. I'm gonna lay down a sheet of it, just like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tortilla. And I like to use these almond flour tortillas. And if you saw our cassava flour tortilla recipe video, we love to make those for tacos, but I found that those don't really freeze well. They kind of get crumbly. So I find that these almond flour tortillas, we get them from Costco. It's about 20 of them in a bag and I have 40 total. So my goal is to make about 40 breakfast tacos. I'm going to put a little bit of eggs just a little bit, potatoes. I'm trying not to overfill them, but I always do. Cheese, a little bit of that one that we grated, and a little bit of that Parmesan. You don't need a ton. And then some of the bacon bits. And that's it. Roll this up. And try to get it toward you and then just roll it up like that. There you go. If the sides spew out a little bit, just tuck them in and then roll in the sides and then just roll the plastic wrap. And just like that, you got a breakfast burrito. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make 40 of these and then I'll go ahead and put these into gallon Ziploc freezer bags. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you how I store these in the freezer. So I just put them in like that in a freezer bag. This is a gallon freezer bag, just lengthwise or whichever way they'll fit. And then I don't put a ton in there. That way they can still store somewhat flat. Get some of that air out. And then I'll just label this breakfast burritos and I'll probably have about four to six of these. 
Okay guys, so this is all mixed. Now we can start layering our pasta. So I'm gonna do one layer first. Just a thin layer like that. And then cover this with some of that Parmesan cheese that we got. You want a nice amount so that it's kind of gooey and not dry. And then another layer, and that's it. Put a little more in there. And then the rest for tonight, we're actually going to have for dinner. So I'm going to bake the one that we have, or I'm going to bake this just to melt the cheese. But essentially this, I just got to clean it up, put the lid on it. I have some more Parmesan, but... This portion here, I'll just put it in here. And then I can go ahead and bake this off with some cheese and melt it. And that's what we'll have for dinner. That way I don't have to cook something else. Whew, that was a marathon, but we have so much food. Let me show you a tour of everything that we got done. Okay guys, so literally here is all the hard work that we did. Some things that we didn't show you on camera because Holly was working on those behind the scenes. I got the burritos almost done. I ended up running out of scrambled eggs and potatoes. So I decided, well, I didn't really run out of potatoes. I just didn't have enough scrambled eggs. I could have made more, but we have plenty of burritos. So I made 20, which is three gallon bags of them. And I thought that's plenty. I'll keep these in the freezer for whenever we run out and I'll just make them at a different time. But we went through a lot of eggs. This is all we have left, which is awesome. We have six of the chicken fried rice. These will be amazing. Look at all this chicken I have left. This will serve two meals, maybe three for all of us. And then I have quinoa and I did write salt. I did forget to write the date on here for some. I'll write that later. But I have about six whole bags of the quinoa. And again, this can be used for anything. You can just thaw this, put this on a salad. You can do a stir fry with this. You can make, we make like a creamy, uh, quinoa with a cheese sauce that we make. Different things. This is the roasted potatoes. I have more, they're cooling. And then I'll put them over here, but let me show you. This is the rest. My oven is so loud. It's the venting, I don't know why it does that. But this is the rest of the potatoes. Once they cool down, I will put them here. And then we have potatoes for something else. And then here we have some of that deer hamburger. So I can make a meal with this and the potatoes or this and the quinoa. I mean, you can mix and match. Here I have that plain brown rice that we made. I have four whole bags. And then here you can see what that baked pasta dish looks like. This is that homemade sauce that we made with our tomatoes from the garden and then the brown rice noodles. And then Holly made this. This is a pumpkin granola. Is it a pumpkin? No, pumpkin granola or pumpkin? Bars. Pumpkin bars. They're pumpkin baked oat kind of bars. You can see it's our carb day here. <laughs> We really don't eat this many carbs in terms of like every single day. But when you see it all laid out like this, it looks like, man, we're carb heavy in our diet. But this is about, you know, one time a week, maybe twice a week that we eat these kind of meals. And then the rest are more from the garden, our produce, what's fresh. And we just love to have these things on hand. And then she also made a homemade granola. And this is using gluten-free oats. And then she used, I'm sure, maple syrup and other things. We can probably do a video for all these things separately. And then this, I just need to put the lid on, but this is the other pasta, the same pasta. I just didn't put it in the oven, of course, because this will be for a different day. This will probably be two meals. I might just cut it in half, and then later on, we'll use these for two meals. But, oh my gosh, we got all that done. I am so excited, and to be completely honest, I'm tired. <laughs> that was a lot of work, but so worth it. I decided not to go ahead and finish doing the chicken broth while I wanted to get that done. It's getting a little late and I just want to rest. So I might do that just on a separate video by itself, or maybe I'll do another video like this. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know. And then I can show you, I'll make the broth first. That way it's all done. But I just wanted to get some staples on hand for us in the freezer because we ran out completely of freezer meals. We had nothing on hand and we really put a dent in what we had from our Azure haul. We still have plenty of things you know, left to use up to make meals. But for now, this is kind of our grains section in our brain that we wanted to go ahead and get meals prepped with that. Now I can start thinking, okay, we have produce in hand. How can I use more of those? We have lettuce, kale in the garden, 
and then we'll have turnips and then other things that we can start processing and freezing or making soups with, stuff like that. So anyway, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. And yes, let us know in the comments what's your favorite meal out of all these, if you have any ideas or any other things that you can add to this. And then yes, feel free to subscribe if you like this kind of homesteading, meal prepping or freezer meal and also gardening related content along with following our nursery and all that good stuff. Anyway, I'm going to eat and rest and relax for the rest of the day. <laughs> We're tired. You guys have a blessed day. Bye. Also, I did forget just a little tip. We did unload the dishwasher prior to all of this and then we, we did just load it up right there. And then ours is like a drawer one. We got it from Amazon, but it's almost full. And then we just have like three or four big bowls that we just need to wash. But for the most part, between Holly and I, we were able to keep up with the dishes. It's really nice to have the dishwasher ready to go. That way when you dirty things up, you can just keep cleaning. And then this is all that's left in the stove. I do have one rogue noodle that left that I, <laughs> I need to pick up and then just clean up a few things. But for the most part, now throughout the week, we don't really have to make a mess in the kitchen because we have things prepped ahead. So anyway, bye.